Yes, sir. We're officially back at it. This is Book Nice coming at you with another news and info video. This is on the menu 14. Let's do it. For no scalper. You a scalper? Then fuck out shit. This one for them real collectors. That's army building and posing figures. Marvel legends. Imports. Many maybe I'm fucking with. Them. Just a quick reminder that the ACBA See Me at the Con limited edition t-shirt is still up for pre-order up until February 1st. So get out there and pre-order this tee so we can see more tees like it. I'll show you the back real quick. And there's a quick shot at the back of the tee. And also the True Run tee is up for pre-order right now. And the Bump t-shirt is also up for pre-order right now. And the Ultra Magnus colorway t-shirt is up for pre-order right now. All of these shirts are available at shop.articulatedcomicbookart.com. The link will be in the description below. So last time we spoke, the uh, Marvel Legends Infinite Series King Thor slash Odin Builder figure wave was starting to trickle out. And uh, since then, it's hit the Philippines. And my man Dom, aka Advocate Pinoy, has put out a review for each one of these figures. Uh, you can see the reviews for all of the figures, including both uh, Builder figures on the ACBA fan page. Uh, well, you know, the link to his channel is on the ACBA fan page, but I'll, you know, I'll link his channel directly uh, in the description below. And I'm pretty happy with this wave well, from what I've seen so far. Obviously, I haven't had any of these in hand just yet, but I am pretty happy uh, with the way uh, this, this entire wave came out for the most part. Uh, so pretty much all of the major retailers have started to put up pre-orders for these. Here's one of Dom's picks real quick. Looks like he has the uh, the uh, Tamashi Flame Effects uh, on Iron Fist here, which looks really, really good. You know, some of the smaller uh, parts that come with the uh, Flame Effects can actually attach to different extremities of figures and stuff like that. So, you know, it can work for domestic stuff too it's not just for imports and that looks really really good quick screen cap from uh dom's video of him reviewing thor um and uh you can see sentry there and that is the marvel now Thor. and again i really do like the way these uh these figures came out in this wave and finally finally we're going to get sentry in this wave along with the uh, hawkeye which we can use to double as our dark hawkeye now we just need that Dark Miss Marvel and we will finally be done with Dark Avengers. My man Dom's Dark Avengers team. So he's got the official release for Hawkeye and for Sentry, which were just released, and the official release for Ares, Iron Patriot, and Dokken. And it uh, looks like Iron Patriot had a little black wash, a little touch up. And then he's got a custom Dark Miss Marvel off of the Moonstone base, which is what they're probably going to end up using if they do actually make it. I believe Mike De La Paz did that one. And then he's got a semi-official um, black-suited Spider-Man here, but it looks like from the lower shin down was swapped out so that way it can have the ankle rocker and toe articulation and what have you there. So real nice. Dark Avengers looking very, very clean right there. I saw this pop up on the net too. This is somebody who was able to purchase the set at retail uh, at Toys R Us or purchase, purchase a couple of figures from the Wave at retail at Toys R Us in Canada. You can see that price tag of $24.99 a piece, which is really expensive. But uh, the, the Legends are a little more costly in, uh, in Canada. Uh, but, you know, that's uh, just lending more uh, to the fact that these are starting to trickle out slowly. Oh, and here's a really, really nice shot from my man, the one cam featuring the uh, Scarlet Witch figure from the King Thor Odin wave. And she came out really nice. This was one of the ones that I was pretty surprised about. And uh, her costume hasn't changed too much over the years. So you can actually use this as a classic Scarlet Witch or even a more modern version and you see he, he's got her coupled with the uh hasbro vision here and he looks really good they look really good just a really nice beautiful vibrant picture right here and uh 
I really like what they did with the effects for her that you can snap onto her hands and stuff. So again, this wave is shaping up to be really, really nice. We recently saw a breakdown of the uh, Hobgoblin wave as well with the Spider-Man figures. You got Spider-Man as number one, Anti-Venom number two, uh, Spider-Man 2099 is number three. Uh, you got Spider Girl as the fourth, and um, a different Spider Woman from uh, another uh, reality, I believe it is, as number five, and a Daredevil figure as number six. A lot of people have been wanting an updated Daredevil, and uh, How Goblin is the Builder figure. Still some speculation as to whether or not we'll see some running changes. Uh, I've been hearing some rumors that they may do another Walmart. I'm sorry, another Walgreens exclusive for this wave, so who knows what that will be. Uh, I heard my man Michael Wisman mention that maybe they'll do a Venom on that uh, anti-Venom slash uh, toxin mold, which would make sense. Uh, that's that's highly possible. Some in-package uh, photos of the Spider-Man wave have started to trickle out as well. Here's a quick shot of Daredevil. And initially, I remember my man Todd mentioning this, but the Daredevil was looking very, very glossy in the initial images that we saw. But it looks like everything is looking much better. I saw some other images. I don't think I have any more to show, but I did see other images of the other figures from the wave. And pretty much all of the paint apps on all of them look way better than they did in the initial pictures that hit the, hit the net. And here you go with one of those uh, instances where... The, uh, the first pictures that we see of the figure look kind of sus. Looks kind of suspect. His head is huge. Look at that shit. Looks crazy. Um, and initially when we saw this figure, it didn't really look like this. So I'm hoping that this is a factory reject or some problem because I also saw this. And this is a packaged version where you see Maria Hill here. I don't even think I said... That was Maria Hill in the, in the previous uh, clip, but this is the uh, Marvel Legends 3-pack that's going to, the S.H.I.E.L.D. 3-pack that's going to have uh, Maria Hill, uh, another Samuel Jackson, Nick Fury, and the Coulson figure. And right here in package, the head doesn't look that crazy, so hopefully by the time this hits retail, we'll be getting better versions than the one that I showed you first. And I totally forgot that this was going to actually be a 3-pack. And uh, I'm highly interested in Army building the Coulson figure just to get that suited body. So this is going to be a pain in the ass to have to buy this three-pack every time to get the Coulson figure. But uh, being that they're finally going to give us a suited body uh, with Marvel Legends, I assume that they're going to use that body uh, again for some other characters that we want to see in a suit. Uh, updated Professor X maybe. Tony Stark, the Mandarin, uh, you know, some Spider-Man villains like Hammerhead or uh, Tombstone or something. Uh, you know, the list goes on with who you can make in a, in a suit. Um, not to mention just generic goons and stuff. I think people wanted to get Coulson for that uh, as well. So, But again, it's going to be a little difficult if you have to buy a three-pack every time. I hope at some point we get to see some more supporting cast, some more females from the supporting cast of Spider-Man's world, and I hope we get to see like uh, Gwen Stacy and Mary Jane and stuff like that. It's obviously been proven that Hasbro can do some nice looking females, especially with this Moonstone mold here, uh, but I wanted to talk about this real quick. I saw this, and this is uh, apparently a knockoff of the Black Cat that is showing up in different places, uh, well, on eBay from China. Uh, I believe, and uh, that's obviously the knockoff is the one on the right, but uh, it's it's not good, but it's not horrible, uh, and it might be a good opportunity for you to use that as a base for a custom or something like that, but I've heard that the, the plastic was a little more flimsy. It was a lot of problems that you can't really see right here on the figure, uh, but, you know, the knockoffs, again, like I said in a couple of videos, uh, the knockoffs are just out there heavy it's crazy I'll show you some more seems like the uh, Rebel Tech Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles have been bootlegged and the KO versions of these are showing up on eBay as well and from my understanding the only major difference that you can tell with these 
is that the bandana has like some green portion on it and it's not totally one solid color like it should be whatever that corresponding color is for, for that turtle. But from what I understand, the figures are a really good uh, knockoff. So if you missed these and you weren't able to get the official uh, release because the, you missed it or they're just too expensive now, then this may be uh, an alternative for you. The Sentinel re-edit uh, Bleeding Edge Iron Man was pretty hot over the past week. A lot of people, uh, not a lot, but a few people purchased this figure and showed them off in the group. And my man Darius and my man Farrell both did reviews of the figure. Uh, this is Farrell's pick right here. And this is an amazing figure. My only gripe is that the figure is like in a 10 inch scale and it's not really any other supporting characters or figures that you can use with this in that scale. Now I did see um, my man um, Incurable Collector put together a little display with this Iron Man and the Wrecking Crew and the Marvel Legends Wrecking Crew figures that we have and he was able to play with the scale a bit and make it look pretty decent so uh, I mean I guess if you do some forced perspective things then then you could kind of make it work as far as the display goes but uh, this this figure is amazing if you haven't checked out the reviews uh, for this for this guy I would definitely check it out just to just to look at the figure even if you don't have the the money to throw down on the figure it's almost a two hundred dollar figure but it is a really nice figure so yeah there he goes with the uh, wrecking crew there in the back so he did pretty well scaling the figures there it looks it looks pretty decent uh, with them amongst the the rubble and speaking of wrecking crew you know I'm all about the segways check this out this is very interesting news right here so pay close attention to this. The, the rumor going around right now is that we may actually see the Wrecking Crew in the upcoming Ant-Man movie. Now remember, I've been saying for the past couple of episodes on the menu that I thought that the uh, Ant-Man movie is going to be like a little sleeper hit that it'll, it'll be uh, well received once it actually does come out. And I don't think that the Wrecking Crew is going to actually make the movie that they're going to be the main antagonist or anything we already know that that's going to be yellow jacket but uh, at some point it's rumored that they're going to make an appearance when ant-man is in prison and i believe this came from imdb's website but if you can see right there alfonso aquin Aten jackson or whatever the hell his name is is uh listed as a prisoner uh for the ant-man movie he's some real diesel black guy right there and then check this out this fella, Blake Sewell, is also listed as a prisoner, just prisoner. And this guy, Raul Colon, is also listed as a prisoner. Pretty diesel guy right there, too. All of these guys that I've shown have been pretty muscular dudes. And uh, I also heard that there was one more prisoner listed, but there was no picture. Um, so that's four prisoners listed, and there are four members of the Wrecking Crew. So that is a pretty interesting rumor. And in the last episode, remember I showed that screen cap of uh, Target's inventory that said they're going to have 6-inch Legends from the Ant-Man movie. And then I heard another rumor that one of the Walgreens exclusives or Walmart exclusive or whatever would be from the Ant-Man movie. So it's a good possibility that they're going to end up giving us this bulldozer finally. And... Uh, this is probably one of the instances in life where Dwight Stahl said some shit that was actually may come to fruition. If this actually turns out to be what it is, then then I only owe Dwight Stahl one slap for all of these years of saying dumb shit that wasn't correct. I remember he said a minute ago that they were going to try to work in uh, some of the missing legends into some of these movies and nobody could really understand how that was going to happen once the Avengers movie passed and these some of these things passed it was just no opportunity but if these guys actually show up in the Ant-Man movie that may make sense and we may actually finally get to finish our wrecking crew so that's really interesting a little work in progress pick from my man Al Figures just a reminder to come out and join our sister group, Dial Structure, on Facebook. 
and learn how to build your own custom accessories and props and dioramas and this is uh, something that my man Al was working on here three stories a building you can see the paintwork and everything looks really really good and if you don't know the majority of the stuff that these guys are building over there is built with just foam it's not any super crazy materials that you need if you've got if you can uh, purchase some foam or have a, a Home Depot or something near you and you got some paint and some paint brushes and some time and a, a little bit of uh, creativity in your mind then you can just do just about anything that you want to do man so definitely come out and join these guys over in Dial Structure and uh, you know and, and learn how to build your own stuff which can only make you a better more well-rounded display artist and there you go quick shot of uh, his uh, dial in action with some ACBA action right there agent venom choking up a hydra agent and a nice clean cutout it looks like one of my man Michael Wisman's cutouts right there a bunch of these little memes are starting to pop up too we know that Captain America Civil War is gonna be basically Captain America 3 I thought this one was pretty funny um, and talking about Captain America my man Papa Doc aka Anthony Mackey well it's really Anthony Mackey aka Papa Doc but uh, it's funny I forgot who said this but uh, somebody was like he'll always be known as Papa Doc no matter what role he takes and that's that's pretty funny that's really what it is that's how I always remember him too I forgot who told me that but uh, recently uh, Anthony Mackey gave an interview talking about Captain America 3 and uh, you could tell that he was just really really hyped about the movie and he was like that it's gonna be like Avengers 3.8 basically and it's just gonna be insane with a lot of action and cameos and uh, they also alluded to the fact that he'll probably get a costume update and uh, <laughs> I saw this pop up now obviously this is not an official image but you know that's kinda uh, leading toward his uh, classic uh, comic costume with the red and white. I don't know if we're going to actually see that in the movie. Personally, I think this looks a little ridiculous. I did like the way they did the uh, the costume in, in Captain America 2. I thought it was well done. I thought his performance was excellent. And I thought Cap 2 was one of the best comic movies ever. It was amazing. A lot of speculation over the past week over who this chick was and the uh, the second trailer for Avengers 2 that was released recently some people saying that it could be Black Panther's sister some people saying that it could be uh, one of the uh, the uh, bodyguards from uh, Black Panther's personal security detail I forget exactly what you call them uh, but a lot of different speculation I, I, I'm 99.9 .9 sure that we are gonna see uh, Black Panther or maybe his father in this movie uh, that they're definitely going to be in Wakanda at some point that vibranium is probably going to come into uh, into the picture at some point uh, so this is really building towards the fact that uh, we're going to see Black Panther in his own movie at some point and he's going to really be making his end costume debut in Captain America 3 if I'm not mistaken, which I just talked about. So uh, the Marvel Cinematic uh, Universe is just shaping up to do some wonderful things, and I'm really excited for this year and, and the next couple of years as far as the MCU is concerned. And I think Avengers 2 is going to be mind-blowing. X3A Judge Death figure is up for pre-order on Big Bad Toy Store. The link will be in the description below. Shout out to my man Merv. He just put out episode 88 of Mato. So check that out. The link for his show will be in the description. Uh, this fellow on the left, and I cannot remember his name. It's not really. I'm on some ghetto news shit. I'm not even giving you the full story. <laughs> Whatever. But this fellow on the left is the uh, was the choreographer uh, for the fight scenes for the Batman, the upcoming Batman vs. Superman movie. And he worked on quite a few other other films uh, as well. But he got interviewed recently in some like far off uh, Latin America country. I mean, obviously, you know, they got to do worldwide promotion for these movies. 
and uh, and he was talking about choreographing the fight scenes for Batman versus Superman and how excited he was and how they really really uh, did their thing on trying to bring this to life and make it make it very official. Um, I believe he worked on the uh, the first Superman movie. He worked on uh, what else did he say he worked on? Three hundred couple other well-known things that you may know that had some very nice fight sequences so I mean I, I don't doubt that they're gonna pull out all the stops uh, for this movie but I also am very concerned about uh, them trying to do too much for this movie and I've said this time and time again but he alluded to the fact that you know this was the beginning of the Justice League and um, you know that he couldn't say too much but you know he basically uh, uh, reaffirm some of the things that we already knew and uh, basically said that the fight scenes was going to be amazing. also read somewhere that uh, Patrick Stewart nor Ian McKellen are going to be returning for X-Men Apocalypse. Uh, X-Men Apocalypse is supposed to be taking place in the 80s and so they're going to have younger versions of each of these characters and the actors apparently won't be returning to to reprise their roles uh, for that, but I don't know. I, I I don't know if that's just some some bullshit to not give away some of the plot or whatever. I can't see them not at least having some type of flash forward or something like that. Uh, but I don't know. We'll we'll see. I mean, from what I understand, this was actually Patrick Stewart saying this. So maybe it's true. Maybe it's not. I actually got a chance to meet uh, Ian McKellen. Uh, I guess like last year at some point. Real nice guy. He was with his family. And this right here is going to blow your mind. I saw this. I saw my man Dave BX uh, duplicate this. But this right here is Jason Clendenning's picture. And um, he um, basically got this idea from James Roebuck. And what James Roebuck did was uh, he bought like one of these like little candy dispenser things. I wish I had a picture of the, of the candy dispenser. But it had... Uh, a Yoda head as the top uh, of the candy dispenser and he popped it off and just dry brushed it and put it on the official Star Wars Black Series 6 inch scale Yoda so that's the candy dispenser head on the body right there you can see the original Yoda head on the, on the left on the floor there and you can see how ridiculous it looks in comparison to uh, the the head that he used from the candy dispenser. So he had to dremel out the neck and drill it down a bit, and then just uh, I guess paint it paint it the face, and that looks freaking amazing. So this is that's James Clend. I mean, I'm sorry, that's Jason Clendenning's like paint work, and you know he did the work, but he got the idea from James Roebuck. So big shout out to James for for even figuring that out. You know these these dudes that cu do customs and kit bashes and stuff like that, they have amazing creativity and you know any anybody that works on customs you gotta really be thinking outside the box to to do some of these things man so this looks dope as hell and here's my man Dave BX and you can see right there he pretty much took the head in its original form and just dremeled it out and put it on the body you can see the neck looks really long and the head looks a little awkward right there and uh, he had showed it to me and a couple of other friends, and we told him the neck was kind of kind of crazy, kind of long. And then he fixed it. There you go. And he dry brushed it. And yo, my man Dave is in no way, shape, or form a customizer of any sort. You know, he just started over the past like six or eight months doing little kit bashes and doing little painting and maybe some epoxy and different things here and there. And if he can do it, then you can definitely do it, man. And this looks really decent right here. This looks good. He did the dry brushing and everything um, and the shading right here, too. So it's not difficult for anybody with a Dremel uh, to just do this. So if I can find the actual link to where you can buy it on eBay, if you want to try this yourself, then, then I will. Or maybe I'll hit up James or Jason or whatever. Uh, and uh, if I can put the link in this video, I definitely will. Shout out to my man Mike Sanchez. Uh, he was out at a con. I forget which con it was, but he got a chance to meet uh, Kevin Conroy right there in the middle. So that was really, really cool. And he's repping ACBA. He's got his shirt on. Took a picture with Kevin Conroy. Dope.